Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Quick Points Podcast. I'm Pat O'Rourke, the sports editor of the BU News Service. Alongside me is BU News Service contributor Alex Hirsch. We're going to... Uh, What's up? Yeah. So, um, I know you, you watch the NFL from time to time, right? Just from time to time. Okay, just I from mean, time to time. It's not my favorite sport or anything. And by from time to time, you mean you watch it? I watch all it religiously Sunday. all say okay. Sunday. I, I think I told you earlier, I canceled the date this past Sunday so that I, yeah. I could be watching that, football. That there is dedication. Oh, I, um, I was mad. I was, yeah. I, was, <laughs> I, I was not. I wasn't mad that I had to cancel the date. I was mad that she thought we could have a date on a Sunday. That's yeah. what I was mad about. No, no, there is no time on Sunday Those are the ones you got to watch on a out date. For. That is my time to watch football. So anyway, um, <laughs> I, I don't know if you picked this up. Um, yeah, I, I watch the NFL from time to time, too. Okay, from time to time. Mm, yeah, every so often. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know if you noticed, but the Patriots are pretty good this year. Pretty good. This is a, probably an, an understatement. Probably you the fast so? understatement. You, the, oh, I, 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 think, I think we all know so right now. Uh, the Patriots are 8-0. Oh. They're one of three teams in the league that are 8-0. Oh. Panthers and the Bengals being that's the other That's an NFL two. record, by the way. NFL record, three teams being 8-0 oh in, the, in the league. And technically speaking, they could all go sixteen and zero. We don't we don't play any of. They don't play each other. We don't play them. So mm-hmm. they, that's a possibility as well too. But That'd be pretty crazy. It, be, it would be very very cool to watch and exciting to see. But there's three teams in the that are eight and zero, and the Patriots are one of those three. And it really seems like in my mind, it's like there's two teams that there's three teams that are eight and zero, but there's only one of them that are like amazing. Yeah, and that's. That's the yeah. I'd, I'd go as far to say that I don't even think the the Bengals or the Panthers are that good. No, when they, I, they're good, but look, they're, they're good. are they eight yeah. no good? No, I don't because think they are. when I when I look at those teams, I I look at them and I still see Marvin Lewis on the sidelines, and I'm like, yeah, if Patriots are playing them. We got this in the bag. If I see Ron Rivera on the sidelines, I think the same exact thing. Andy Dalton, Andy Dalton. Oh my yeah. God, win win me a game in the playoffs, and and then I'll have respect for you, and then I I, I will believe in you. But until then. I mean, even Bengals fans, this season means nothing to them. They could go 16-0, but if they lose in the first round, goodbye, Andy Dalton. They're not, they, don't, they don't care. You're probably right. You're, yeah. that's, they, it's if not, they, they go 16-0, they go one and done. They, the know, and the they know this done. season is a waste if they don't make it through the playoffs. doesn't matter. what They could go 15-1, 14-2. Andy Dalton could be MVP. But if they do not win a playoff game and they lose in the first round, goodbye, Andy Dalton. I don't know what Marvin oh, Lewis the same is doing. Time, the I don't know what Marvin Lewis is doing to keep his job, but somehow he is. The Patriots team, yeah, you're not no no fans, no peop, no analysts. They're looking at it at the same lens that they're looking at through uh, that they're looking at the mm-hmm. Panthers and the Bengals. They're looking at them through a completely different lens. They're looking at them through this lens that's like, here we go again. This is the greatest team we might ever see, and they they are. They're playing at this level that is almost unprecedented. Brady is playing at a level that is unprecedented mm-hmm. right now. He is having the greatest season he has ever had, and that's saying something. Statistically, yeah. Statistically. I don't, he may have been, uh, he may have been better in 07. No. Statistically and just overall, he is having a better season than he has ever had right now. And and we talk about MVP candidates, and Cam Newton is in there. Uh, mm-hmm. Andy Dalton is, is in there. They're only no, they're in not. there because they have to be in order to – for there to be an MVP, there has to yeah. be some MVP list. There needs to be there, a runner-up. There has to be a runner-up. But in, in my the, mind, they're in the run for the runner-up. They're, they're, they're in the run, run for the runner-up because the MVP candidate is really only Tom Brady, and he is yep. so far ahead of them. It's ridiculous. It's like the Secretariat beating every single other horse mm-hmm. in the in the race. He's what. Tw- 39, 30, 38, 39, 40 lengths ahead of them. Mm-hmm. Brady is the secretariat right now, and he is doing something that is incredible. I, I, you could probably make a case for Rodgers up there. He's up there, but he's still yeah. not with Brady. It doesn't matter. Yeah. He's not with Brady. His team's lost, what, f- two straight now? Yeah, they've two, lost two straight. Two straight. He's thrown three interceptions in the last game. That Couple already, bad games. That happens. already puts him miles behind Brady. That's yeah. all That's all that does. So he's back in the, he's back in the area with Andy Dalton and Cam Newton right now. Mm-hmm. So... And other players like uh, Luke Keekley and uh, anyone else that's having an amazing season. But uh, Gronk. Gronk is also in that category more. Might be able to put Adrian Peterson in there too. It may be. Uh, but the fact of the matter is n- these candidates, they're not candidates. They're there because mm-hmm. they have to have a list of players. There has to be a runner-up. Brady is miles ahead of this, these, these players. Miles ahead. Mm-hmm. And when you're facing them, that has to do something to the team's psyche. They have to prepare for them in a way that is that 
who knows? I mean, there's so many different options on this team with Gronkowski, with Edelman, with even Amendola, Brandon LaFell coming back to full health. We just I, lost one big yeah, option in Deion Lewis. I will be interested with Deion Lewis. Yeah, well, I think he, the thing with Deion Lewis, like, he wasn't He wasn't, wasn't an option. Guy, he was he a was, threat. There's a, there's a difference. He wasn't an option, but it was he was when, a threat. When, yeah, he was a threat. When he was out there, that, that – Offense was literally he impossible was, to he stop. He was deployed as a weapon. He wasn't deployed as Shane Vereen and, as just checkdowns yeah. or and let, you know Danny Woodhead. And, to and do let's not other make things. him out to be a stiff. I mean, this this no. was a guy who was on. He was on pace to have about thirteen hundred all-purpose yards. Uh, no one's making him out to be a yeah. stiff. He was a weapon. They used him as a weapon. Shane Vereen, Danny Woodhead, Kevin Falk. Those weren't used as weapons. They mm-hmm. were used as great role players. Dion Lewis was actually targeted. He was used as a absolute weapon and the statistics prove that he was having an incredible year but i don't believe he is a player that makes or breaks this team going 16 and 0 being the greatest team of all time or winning the super bowl i don't i don't think Dion lewis is going to hold this team back from that it'll be interesting to see what james white and brandon bolden can combine to do that Mm -hmm. james white uh, I mean, he had the potential. There's a reason we drafted him in the fourth. Patriots drafted him in the fourth round. He's looked terrible since being on the field. He has not done well. Um, and the one game that he played uh, for Jane, uh, for Deion Lewis when he was out against the Jets, though, so that might be something to it as well. But it'll, it will be interesting to see, but we still got Gronk, Edelman, Amendola, mm-hmm. uh, d- um, who am I missing? Brandon LaFell. Maybe maybe Scott Chandler's used now a little bit more. He is, he's been quiet pretty much all season. So... I don't think he makes or break it. Gronk and Brady are the only players on this team that make or break this team. I would, yeah, I'd say, I'd say yeah, I mean, losing, well, yeah, losing Gronk is probably, you get you can get to the Super Bowl losing, Bro- losing yes. Gronk, but can you win it? I don't know. It who knows? You it might depend, be able to. Depends on who you're playing, I guess, this yeah. year because the teams are so atrocious. But uh, I think against a Panthers team, you might not be able to mm-hmm. because that Panthers defense is very good. But at the same time, we – should be able to neutralize that offense pretty efficiently. Um, I think so so, the, so the, the thing is, so with Dion Lewis out, so what is it now? Instead of scoring like thirty-eight points per game, we're scoring thirty-three points per game. I mean, like that's that's the thing is, we're, this is still well, they a might, they highly might have to evolved offense that they is might have just going to be rolling. O- yeah, yeah, might have to punt a couple of times. I'm this not saying I'm not saying the season's offense. over. I'm saying no, you know, no what Dion Lewis brought to that offense but, was yeah, absolutely, but. He doesn't make a break. This is still an absolutely lethal offense. And there's no one in this league, no matter what defense there is, how good your defense is. We've, we've destroyed the best defense in the league at the Jets. Mm-hmm. And we're, we've got a showdown with the Broncos in a couple of weeks. And they just got hurt a little bit by the Broncos. The Broncos uh, don't Colts. scare me one bit. They don't scare me at all. So I my, think point that's is, a fraud team. my point is that the, the Patriots' offense is so much better than everyone else, even without Deion Lewis. So I don't know how much it's really going to hurt this team. I, it didn't against the Jets, and they were the best defense at the time. Mm-hmm. And we still ran all over them, so offensively. I wouldn't say they ran all over the Jets. I think offensive-wise we did. You think I, so? I, yeah, offensive-wise. Defensively, I, I mean, they, they, great, they, they didn't have as great a day, but. <laughs> What's well, not a great day? You're still putting up over 30 points yeah, on, the great, I mean, on the best defense yeah, in the well, league. Great, granted, we're grading on a skill here. Yeah. So, But I think uh, – you know, I, I think the really the point I really want to get to with this is, you know, I want to ask you, do you think this is the best Patriots team we've seen under Bill Belichick and Tom Brady, which I guess in, in essence would mean <laughs> the best Patriots team ever? Well, I think it's a good question, and I think it's hard to tell right now. If the season were to end now, if like essentially if it were eight-game mm-hmm. seasons, yeah, I, I think it is. I you think it's think better so. than the 07 team. You think they're better than 07? I do think they're better than the 07 team. I think... I'll say their defense um, is definitely better than 07. Yeah, the defense... I love yeah. this defense right now. Yeah. I love I love what Chandler Don't Jones you just is feel doing. like the defense is flying flying oh, way under the radar? So way under the radar. Chandler Jones is the NFL sack leader. Does anyone even know that? Did anyone know that? Yeah, He's got yeah, more yeah. sacks than the J.J. Sack, Watt. The sack leader can be, I think that's kind of a It doesn't matter. He's flying under the think, radar is the yeah. point. Oh, absolutely. Is the point. But and I don't, Jamie I don't Collins, think Chandler Jones is going to be, I don't think Chandler Jones has been the best player on that, on that's, that defense. That's, that's not the point. The yeah, point he's been, is. He's been very good. The point is that Chandler Jones is flying under the radar and he's mm-hmm. leading the NFL in sacks over guys like J.J. Watt right now. And then you've got Jamie Collins and Donta Hightower, who might be the best linebacker tandem in all of football. Well, I think and Collins has been the guy in that offense, on that defense. He's been their best player. Absolutely. 
absolutely. And the, he's those really are, come out. He is. He's the he is the best player on that defense, and he might be one of the best linebacker in all of football for all we know. But when those two are on the field together, and Belichick is r- blitzing these guys, oh my God! It's it. The, Jamie Collins is impossible to stop, and then Di- yeah. Donta Hightower is impossible to stop. Well, how about that? And, and then right now they're missing Jabal Sheard too, who is yeah. a great offseason signing. And through the first five games when he was playing, he was another element that was just so phenomenal, and he looked unstoppable at times too. And that when he comes back, which hopefully he does, I, I mean it's been a pretty mysterious injury with him. Well, with he hasn't me, been it's practicing. Not, it's not up front for me. I knew that we knew they were going to be really, really good up front. I'm not how, sure we did. I thought I thought we knew, we had an idea. I, I think it, we had an idea, anything, but we've if, never been this good up front. If we've anything, never been blitzing this much. We've never been getting. But this if many anything, sacks that was going to be the strength. Hits. It was going to be the strength because the secondary was but such was, a question mark. And that's that's what surprised me is how good the secondary's been. Well, the secondary has been great. Malcolm Butler has I held love Malcolm his own. Butler. Uh, he's held his own. Logan Ryan has been way better than expected. Ryan's gotten better. He's and Patrick Chung has been phenomenal. Yeah, well, uh, I think Chung is, has found himself. I think Chung is, had a few years really fought. I remember Patrick Chung really. It was like his second year. I think it was 2010. He he had a great year, and people were saying, you know, this is the future leader of the defense. This is the next Rodney Harrison type. You know, lawyer Malloy. And then he he had some. You know, he battled injuries. Well, I think the league play, also changed in those years too. The maybe league, a little bit. The league too, went yeah. for way more of a high flying passing attack, yeah, and but Chung's, I think, Chung's I think weaknesses there was, were exposed. Yeah. And we brought Chung back well, last I think the year injuries because were big too well, with him. Well, we brought Chung la- back last year because we could hide his weaknesses with a secondary of McCordy, Browner, and Revis. We lose Revis and Browner, and a lot of people are concerned going into season that Chung will be exposed. And lo and behold, he has not been exposed mm. whatsoever. Chung has been probably the best player in the secondary right now. Maybe. He has been that, dominating. Devin McCourty's also been very, yeah. very good this year. Well, that, that's another, I, I've always said that I think the most important non-quarterback position on the field is the safety position. You it, look at, at least in the NFL, you look at the teams that have won Super Bowls over the past um, 10, 15 years, they all have one thing in common, and they have great safety play. And the Patriots' safeties right now with McCourty and Chung. And you go all you go back to Deron Harmon, too. He's been very good. Their safety, they're at the safety position, they are dynamite. Yeah, they, they most certainly are. And I think, you know, the, that tandem is is really is really showing that they, they can be here for a couple of years at least. I mean, I know Chung is under a, I believe, a three. He's got two years remaining on his uh, current three-year deal um, yeah, so, that he signed in the yeah. offseason. So I think this is a... This is a tandem that can work together for a little bit. They're both very young still. Um, and, you know, Malcolm Butler has been has been looking good. And one of the biggest points about this defense, too, they don't get penalized. And that's a huge difference mm-hmm. between the last year's team with Brandon Browner leading the league practically yeah. in penalties. Yeah, definitely. And this year, well, McCourty got his first penal- pass interference penalty in three years, mm-hmm. two weeks ago against the Colts. Uh, I mean that's that's incredible. Well, I, I think itself. that was a that was a pretty soft call too. It was a soft, but yeah. the fact of the matter is he like doesn't get them, he doesn't matter. The fact is that he doesn't get penalized. Mm-hmm. And uh, Logan Ryan hasn't been picking up penalties. Malcolm Butler has been extremely aggressive and hasn't been picking up penalties. Yeah. Uh, it's been and Chung is an aggressive player as well, not picking up penalties. We're not going off sides. We're not uh, we're not getting defensive mm-hmm. holding calls. This has been a very 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 good defense. So back to the que- back to the million dollar question: Is this the best Patriots team we've seen? I think it's better than the 2007 team, and the 2017 team was the best team I'd ever seen. So yes, they have a better defense. I think their offense is more dynamic. I think Edelman is worlds better than Wes Welker, mm-hmm. and I know Randy Moss. I think Randy Moss is possibly the single greatest talent at receiver of all time. It's debatable with him and Jerry Jones, uh, Jerry, Jerry Rice. Rice. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> not, not Jerry Jones. But I think, you know, I think Randy Moss was just so special. But I think, I think Gronk might be even more special because I think you could stop Randy Moss. There were ways to stop him, and part of that was on Randy Moss on himself. Uh, Randy Moss would stop Randy Moss and not putting in a full effort. Gronk, 110% full effort every time. Not only does he, he is, not only is he amazing receiver and you can't take him down, he's also possibly the best blocking tight end in all of football as well too, which helps this team even more than Randy mm-hmm. Moss did. 
but you can't take Gronk down. You can't cover him. That doesn't necessarily mean we're always targeting him, and that's what makes it so special too. Well, we have you, so many you other. You go to options. Gronk, you go to Gronk, you go to Gronk, then you go to Edelman, then you go to Edelman, then you can go to LaFell, you can go to Amendola, yeah, you can go to anyone. Go to those There's guys. so many different options on this team that there are way more options, I feel like, than there were on the mm-hmm. 2007 team. And I, I think, think Gronk is way more special than Randy Moss. Was. I think Scott Zolak, uh, who is the obviously the Patriots color commentator, for those who don't know, did put it. Perfectly. I th- it was early on in the season. Basically, that Gronk, Gronk is your home run, home run hitter. You want to hit the three-run shot, you go 30 yards downfield with Gronk. And then, you know, everyone else is just death by a thousand paper cuts. You know, mm-hmm. Deion Lewis, back when he was, you know, um, he had a, he had a knee. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess now it would be Blunt and James White. But, you know, then you, had, you have Edelman, you have Amendola, you have LaFell now. You have Scott Chandler. It, you kind of just go to those guys, death by a thousand paper cuts, and you got boom over the middle of the Gronk, and and there's that. That I I, I 100% agree. That the, the Gronk and Gronk is, in my opinion, he's a better talent than Randy Moss. He is a better or, uh, talent might be the wrong word. He's a better player than Randy Moss because he does way more for the team. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think this is the best team I think I've ever seen, um, and it's that therefore making it the best Patriots team I think I've ever. I still went. go with that 04 team. Ah. That that was that third Super Bowl team. That was a great great team. I think that's a team to me. They're up there with the '86 Bears and the '72 Dolphins, and and that they could have, should have, would have run the. I mean, that's a team that could have run the table. They ran into a. I don't know if you remember that that Halloween game against the Pittsburgh Steelers, where it was a hot Steelers team. Yeah, that was a again a really good team. Uh, they had a rookie Ben Roethlisberger in there. Was just chucking it around. Really didn't know much better. They had the two-headed monster and Jerome Bettis and and uh, Deuce Daly. Mm-hmm. That was a really good team. That was a really good offense. And they they were hot at the time. They, you know, Patriots Patriots got them at the wrong time, and, and the Steelers beat them. And it was it was at Heinz Field too. And then they had that that trap game with the Dolphins later in the season. And and that's why they went fourteen two. But then they then look at the three teams they beat: Indianapolis, at Pittsburgh. And that Philadelphia Eagles is a really good team. That, that, that's the big difference between that team and this team is that that was a really good NFL that year. That was a very good NFL that year. I mean, they had, um, but I don't. They had a fifteen and one team. It, I don't def- ever look at the Colts in the playoffs as a quality win. So you know, <laughs> I think uh, Peyton Manning. Peyton yeah, that was still a great himself. team. Peyton Manning, Manning and that himself. offense, and he pooped himself like he always does. Yeah, but that, Peyton, that was still himself. you still got to you still got to beat him. That was a, that was a great offense. That was a record setting offense that year, and and they held him to three points. It wasn't that that 2004 Patriots, albeit very very good team, mm-hmm. but I don't think they have anything on the 2007 Patriots or the 2000 and well, I think they do and 2015 Patriots. Corey Dillon in this day and age, yeah. Try it, try finding someone who would tackle Corey Dillon in today's NFL. But wh- you don't want, it doesn't even matter. You don't need to run the ball in the league anymore. You can run the ball all day. I take 2004 Run the, run the ball all day. I don't, I don't care, care what year it if is. You, if you want to run the ball all over me all day, it doesn't matter. You're not going to win that way. You can't win on a running game th- anymore. That's not that's not the way you win. I think they could win with the, with 04 Tom Brady. He could win. No, I don't I don't I, you, I don't you know. Think, you think you think Tom Brady Tom Brady is as good as I, I don't even know who's comparable to You think days. you think Tom Brady 04 wouldn't be passable in today's NFL with the quarterback play you see in the NFL week 2. Absolutely. You watch you watch the NFL all day every day. You and you you watch the quarterback play. You're saying Tom Brady in 04 would not be better than any of those guys. It's not better than every single one of the guys that were playing uh, that, that are in the NFL this He'd year. He'd be right up there. No. No, he would not be right up there. He'd be he'd be good, but he's not he's not gonna win. He's not gonna be eight and zero right now. That's for sure. Uh, Tom uh, Tom Brady. This team is better. This Tom Brady is way better, and this team I is better. I think they'd be eight and zero right now. No, with that defense. No, with that defense with Brewski, with McGinnis, with with Seymour, Tom, Tom Brady, with Rodney in Harrison back there. The 2004 Tom that Brady defense would have alone. Had, if you think that, if no, you think that you're, if you're you think wrong. This that 2004 defense, is good, defense would have had a very hard time against the Jets a couple weeks ago. If you think that, that 2014 if you think that's would, this defense, you should have seen that. Corey defense Dillon would not have had a great running game against the against the Jets a couple weeks ago, and Tom Brady would have been handled be. against that team. I don't know. I don't know Absolutely, about that. that team oh had some God. pretty good weapons too. <laughs> That team, wh- what Branch weapons? was good. Branch was, but they had, they had they very, a, very good wide receivers. They, they, had, they had not very, very good. They had 
good wide receiver. Yeah, Deion Branch and David Gibbons. Gibbons, Gibbons they're not had gonna, a great year. They're, they're not going to do anything against Darrell Revis, Antonio Cromartie, and Buster Scrine against that Jets. The, the 2004 Patriots playing would've. this year would not be better. undefeated would've and would not have a chance at running the table. This team does have a chance at running the table. And the difference is the difference between Tom Brady. Brady is the difference. Brady now versus Brady then is a million times better. And that's what matters in this league because this is a passing league. Running doesn't really matter. Hence the reason why we beat the Jets well, when our at, lead well, running the... back had negative three yards. It didn't matter. We don't need to run the ball. No one needs to run the ball well, look at the Look at the Vikings, though. I mean, the Vikings are a 6-2 and two team that's in witness protection right now. Adrian Peterson's had an unbelievable year. He's a big part of that team. He's a big part of that offense. Sure. Yeah, certainly, certainly They're not going to go anywhere. That, t- that team's not going anywhere. Well, I think, they I might think make they the could. playoffs. Well, th- th- sure, great. Go make the playoffs. That's not going to win you a championship. That team's not nearly as good as this, as that 04 Patriots team. The, this that, team? Uh, I'm talking Vikings. about that, that Vikings team. That's, that's that, not that, the point. That 04 Patriots team would roll in this league. Uh, it, but they wouldn't. <laughs> and I think would, you are no. underestimating Tom Brady big time no, that, I think that you're, year. What you're doing is you're overestimating how no. much a running game. I think Tom How much Brady, a running game matters. The running game doesn't matter anymore. Tom Brady was really emerging as an elite passer. It was not season. an elite passer. 05, 06 is when he really arrived as that elite passer. No. 04, 04 he was incorrect. becoming that guy. 02, I think 03 was where maybe you'd have a case in 2003, the second Super Bowl season, where he was still more of a – I wouldn't. I, I don't want to – I don't like calling him a game manager. I, I never thought he was a game manager. I've never liked having that label on him. Was he the? But in two thousand one, two, three, four, he was a game manager. I, I, don't, I don't. Those teams were one on their defenses and their ground. Yeah, game. Yeah, their, their defenses was a big part of it. And, and that's their how ground they game w- was huge too. Again, yes, and that was that was kind of the key in that. But in that the ground NFL. game doesn't but matter these days. Was, I think Brady was very very good. He wasn't. Again, he wasn't the best quarterback in the NFL, but I think he was top five, top ten quarterback in the NFL, which you no. wh- you can win with that. He wasn't a top five you quarterback. You can win with that. If Joe, maybe Joe Flacco a top won, 10 quarterback. Joe Flacco won a Super 10. Bowl. Joe Flacco had an incredible run. He, he did something that n- had not been done before. He didn't even throw a pick. Yeah, he, he was out of his mind. So, yeah, their team was better overall going into the playoffs, but then Joe Flacco turned it up to a level that Tom Brady didn't have at that time. Tom Brady didn't have the level that Joe Flacco oh, I had. I think he did. No, he didn't. Those, those la- the last drive, he, he, he led two Super Bowl winning drives. At 20, what was he, 23 and 25? That's great. Yeah, I'm happy he led two Super Bowl winning drives. That doesn't mean that he, he had the in level 04, to— he didn't throw a pick either. That doesn't mean that he had the level to, th- to play five, at the five. level that Joe Flacco did. Joe Flacco led his team to the Super Bowl that year. In the playoffs. Tom Brady did not lead his team to the Super Bowl in the playoffs. No, he was huge for them in, in that year. No, Corey Dillon and the defense were bigger, though. That's what led the team. It was an overall team But Brady team was effort. a very, very big part. Flacco Brady led was a this very, team. very, very big Flacco part. Flacco led that team with no defense, mind you, except for Ray Lewis playing like he was blessed by Jesus Christ and God himself. Yeah, it was Darian Antler Spray. It wasn't th- Jesus Christ and God himself. What? It was it was Darian Antler Spray. It wasn't Jesus Christ and God himself. <laughs> It might have been, whatever. But Ray Lewis was playing out of his mind. But the defense wasn't very good. They were on their absolute last legs. Joe, F- their running game wasn't successful. Flacco was the reason that team won. Brady yeah, was not, not the reason these teams won. He was a big. Re- he was a big, big reason, part of it, though. But he's a part of it. I don't there's know a if, difference. You know, I I don't. But do they do they win those super? Do they win three Super Bowls in four years without Tom Brady? My answer is no. No, probably not. But that doesn't mean that he was the difference. Do they win three Super Bowls in four years without that defense? No, probably not. It wasn't. They it wasn't last Super Bowls? year. It wasn't last year where I think he single handedly won that Super Bowl last year. I thought they they won that Super Bowl last season in spite of their defense, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, I, I guess so. I, would, I mean, you, that's a. I think you can well, make a case that that your defense, defense really when su- your defense oh, your puts de- you down fourteen points in the. 14 points twice, no, not I, once, twice in I the divisional they, round, and then puts them de- puts you down 10 points in the Super Bowl. I think and their you defense— managed to win the Super Bowl. No, the defense didn't win you anything. No, that defense did win them in the second half in that game. No. The second half of that game, they made the correct adjustments. They put Brandon Browner on Brady Chris had Matthews. To, Brady had to bring him back from a 10-point 10 10 point deficit. He did, because their defense suck, struggled in the first half. But in that second half, their defense really stepped it up. It was the adjustments that Belichick made that really helped them win that Super Bowl, as well as Tom Brady. Brady was incredible in that Super Bowl, and he did— Win them that Super Bowl. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But Brady now 
is way better than Brady in 04, and this team is better oh, I'm, than I'm not 04. saying I'm not saying he's. I'm but not that's saying Brady's the difference not. because this 04 team yeah. would not be able to do what they wanted to do. They would have to rely on Brady more, and Brady would've. wasn't reliable as reliable as he is now. So that yeah, maybe they'd be good. I maybe they'd reali- be a six been. and two team like Teddy Bridgewater's Vikings, but they're not the eight and zero Patriots that are, we are seeing right now. That's not the same. And even if they are eight and zero, they're not a sustainable eight and zero. We would that that's for sure because then they would go into the Broncos probably and get their butts kicked because they wouldn't be able I to run against that. them. And Brady wouldn't be able to I, throw I against see. Aqib Tlaib and Chris Harris and Bradley Roby I don't, I don't and TJ see. Ward. The thing with the thing with the Bronx, it's not so much the teams, it's the coaches. I don't I just don't see Bill Belichick getting out coached by Gary Kubiak and Wade Phillips. Maybe not in the playoffs, but in no, the regular, regular season, season game, too. it might happen. He got out coached by Josh McDaniels. Yeah, it was in 09 with a terrible team. So, but still it was the Patriots. It was Bill Belichick. The, the point my point being is you can't you can't expect them to win games and win a Super Bowl and be better than this team solely off of their ground game. And I know B- Brady was a good part of that offense, but they they ran it. That, that was their offense, was ground and pound and then Brady throwing. There's mm-hmm. a reason why Brady didn't, you know, Brady was one of the lowest starting quarterbacks in completions that year. They didn't throw the ball what all was that he, 17th? Much. What? He was 17th, right? No, in completions. Not completions, oh, completions percentage. Yeah, well. Completion percentage, though, 17th. That's not the makings of an elite quarterback. Well, their they're, offense was fourth in the league. Their completion. Yeah, but that, was part, that was part of their running. And I think then quarterback com- plays a lot to do completions, with it. Completions, he was only 12th. Like, that's, that's, not a, that's not an elite quarterback right there. So, Brady, the difference between 2004 and 2015 mm-hmm. is Brady. That's the difference between the two. Brady, and he is a million times better. Yes, there's a drop-off in the running game, but the defense is still yeah. very good. This is a very, very good defense. It might very not good. be as good in the, as the 04 was great. defense. 04 was great. 04 was historically great. good. It was historically great. Historically good. That's, that's but, and, 84, but 2015, 85 Bears, the 2015, 72 Dolphins. The 2015 defense is still very good defense. It's not historical as the 2004, but it is very good. There's a drop-off, and there's a drop-off in the running game. But the running game doesn't matter in this day and age anymore. You can win without the running game. And you can win Super Bowls without I'll take the Corey running Dillon. game. Uh, obviously, I'd take that Corey Dillon. No, no, one, no, one's, <laughs> no one's disputing that. Yes, would I like to guys. have Corey Dillon on this team? Absolutely. Sure. But does he make, make a difference between this team going 16-0 and, and not, would this team can this team go 16-0 without him? Absolutely. They don't need Corey Dillon to win in this day and age. Well, am I taking this 2015 team over this 2004 team? Yes, I am. Well, do you think that 07 team would? Do you think that 07 team would be as good this year? I mean, you're talking about a, a team that. Yeah, yeah, is I in do. A different game. I do. do I think, think so? I think the 07 team would be as good as they were this year. Um, I think they'd be eight and zero. But it was a high flying passing attack. That's what wins in this league. And Brady was, you know, arguably having the greatest season of all time. Yeah. At that point, yeah. I think I think I think they'd be winning this year. And uh, and to be honest, uh, Lawrence Maroney was actually pretty damn good that year too. Uh, probably the only year he was pretty damn good. But he was good. Um, so, yeah, I, th- I think they would have. They would have Kevin Falk there. Um, they have – they got the receivers. The yeah, I'd defense, say they're second. The only, the only I would say 07 is defense. second. You think 07 team is better than this year's team too? Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. Well, why? I, I can at least – I can at least hear – I can understand that better than your 2004 analogy. I mean, they, but, they only went 16 and 0. I mean <laughs> – Yeah, they went 16-0. They only ran the table. I mean, granted, they, they go 15 and 1 if Rex Ryan doesn't call a timeout, but – I, I would I would take I'd say that team's better than this one. Why? On what what reason? Well, I I, th- I think Moss I think having Moss um, and Welker I think Moss and Welker probably I wouldn't say they're better than Gronkowski and Edelman, but I, I I'd say Welker might be a little bit better than Edelman. Oh no! Oh, I, uh, Edelman was is Edelman's way better and way more dynamic than uh, Welker I th- too. I think with Welker I think I just think Welker is the greatest slot receiver of all time. I. What he was oh. able to do for those few years, and um, he caught pretty much everything except for um, yeah, game winning catch. Yeah, that that, you know. that catch in the Super Bowl. But you know, I, I I don't know. I think I love El- love Edelman too, but I think he's he drop drops more passes. I, mean, I um, think he gets targeted way more than Walker does. But yeah, but yeah, you know, he has. I think he drop you know drops more passes. Yeah, um, but Welker, get, the difference is Walker is maybe also a little more strictly a slot receiver. Edelman is not strictly a slot receiver. In fact, he plays most of his snaps on the outside, that's who they, not in that's the slot. Who, but I think you know Walker in that role though. 
Um, you know, like it was the same way with it was the same way as this offense. This, yeah, as this offense where Moss was your home run hitter, and it, your death by a thousand paper cut guys was guys like Welker and, and Jabbar Gaffney, and Jabbar and Dante Gaffney, Stallworth, and, Dante and, and yeah, you had Falk, Falk in there too, and Falk's another one. No, Falk is Falk's one of the greatest all time, one of the all time greatest Patriots. Sure. What you know? What he was greatest third down running back ever, and it's a guy that one of those guys that you you could put him in there and you know he's going to give you. You didn't have to wonder. Oh my God! You know, hopefully we can get this play. You know, Kevin Kevin Falk made every play that you needed him to. And and by the way, that fourth and two that he didn't make, that was a good that he that was good. He he had that first down there. But but that's that's not what this is about. You know, I think you can make an argument that the 2017 team is better. Uh, obviously, you can make an argument. I mean, they went 16-0. and 0. Um, But I still think this team is better. I think this defense is better. Uh, it's younger. It's mm-hmm. uh, Which is, that defense was old. Um, but this is, this is a younger team. I think it's a more dynamic um, defense as well. Uh, and I think the offense... I think the offense is better. I mean, I'd rather have LeGarrette Blunt in my backfield than I would Lawrence Maroney. I remember there was, um, there was an article on, um, it was on, I think it was on Bleach Report a few years ago, that it was making a case that Bill Belichick was slowly building, they're quietly building the next Patriots dynasty. I, I think, think we could this be, is one of the youngest football teams. You could be seeing that right now, right now between last year's pa- team. The Patriots have one I think of there the was a youngest lot put on teams. Revis last year. If I'm not mistaken, like, they their average age is the youngest. What yeah. last year was the youngest mm-hmm. team in football. I think it there was, was a only lot Brady put on. and Wilfork that are over 30 years old, and then this year it's what Allen Branch and Brady are the only people over 30. Maybe. I mean, this is a very very yeah, young team, but I think I think he is. I think Belichick is quietly building a dynasty and. We're really gonna. I mean, this is an extremely young team. You're, Gronk is your best player, one of your best players. He's only 26. Edelman's only what 27 or 28. You've got yeah, these, yeah. He's, uh, he might be. Let's see when he, he. I think his first year was on nine. So Gronk is 26. Um, yeah. No, I'm talking about I'm talking about Edelman. Edelman he's 27. Be, um, I but, thought he's like 20 or 29. Uh, regardless, the point is, yeah. this is a young team. Devin McCourty, young. Malcolm Butler, young. Patrick Chung, still very young. Logan Ryan, young. Mm-hmm. Collins, young. Hightower, young. Uh, Chandler Brown. Jones, young. I mean, uh, Ninkovich is one of the older players on the team with uh, with uh, Allen Branch and How Brady. How old is Ninkovich, by I the way? I think he's about 31. But the that point is right. they are quietly building towards a, di- um, a, a a new dynasty. You got you just said Malcolm Brown, mm-hmm. D- uh, Dominique Easley. This offensive line is insanely young. And you've got um, – You've got – you're basically missing running backs. And if you had hit on those receivers that you drafted a couple of years ago, you'd be you'd be in there running backs. You'd have receivers as well that are being building towards that, you know, young dynasty, so uh, that new dynasty. But we're not really going to – we're going to find that out coming up. I mean, it, if they can go well, – they, they run the table this year again. Well, we, we got yourselves another dynasty, sir. So, I don't know. It'll be interesting to find I out. Think, um, but um, that well, would, I think it's, it's all been one, one big dynasty. It is, it is, but I think he's building a separate one. He's, there's this is the po- this is going to be eventually the post Tom Brady dynasty, I would believe. Um, I don't know if they I don't know if they rip off Super Bowls like without without Brady. I, oh, have to see I know, but they have to draft someone. Obviously, they're going to have to get another quarterback. Well, Garoppolo but they, could be they're the guy. Bu- they're building they're building a team to get ready for the post Tom Brady era. That's mm-hmm. already going to have enough pieces around this quarterback so that he can a quarterback can come in and start winning again uh, right away. So well, we're not we're not gonna find that out. Right. We're not gonna find that out for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And there's eight more games left in the season. We're gonna see what happens. If they can pull this off again, well, you got yourselves the second dynasty or one big continued one. Uh, but that's it for quick points today. I'm Alex Fish alongside sports editor for the BU News Service, Pat O'Rourke. We'll be back on Friday with our second um, four and out. Um, Session show, I guess you could call it. Yeah, I don't know what um, you call it. We'll, video, video. It'll be up on bnewservice.com on Friday evening. So make sure you go check that out as well as our first one should be up later today. Uh, have a great week, and we will see you on Friday. So long, everyone.